And our first founder is going to be, he just goes by Shri. So he's going to tell you about that. But Shri, Chief of Staff at Fluix AI. Give him a hand. Yeah, this is hard. Nerve wracking. You got this. America is losing the AI arms race. AI runs on data centers, which needs access to compute and energy. But did you know one in five data centers cannot be built because the grid just cannot handle it? Power is capped, energy distribution is broken. We're being outcompeted by our global competitors like China, who have complete sovereign control over their entire tech stack, power, and utility. My name is Abhishek Sriram, Chief of Staff of Fluix, and we're building the AI operating system that plans, operates, and optimizes the entire life cycle of data centers. Today, we optimize and save up to 40% in energy costs by autonomously controlling HVACs, IT, water, cooling infrastructure in real time. What we've learned and the secret that we've unlocked is that AI compute is volatile, extremely hard to predict, and changes on a millisecond by millisecond basis. It consumes tremendous amounts of power and outputs tremendous amounts of heat. Optimizing data centers is one thing, but how do we use the AI models that we've built and the data that we collect from these data centers to predict load growth on a grid scale? We're in five data centers all across America and LATAM, and the biggest news, the biggest news is that we just signed with one of the largest US utilities. We're using our optimization data to help them predict their load growth. The problem is companies like Schneider Electric, Honeywell, Siemens Energy aren't able to predict load growth in data centers. But why? Data centers are some of the most complex infrastructures ever built. It's like a thumbprint, a snowflake. <laughs> but why do we win? Because we've built an AI model that understands data centers like no one else. We optimize data centers, and we help utilities all across America predict load, expand infrastructure without doubling resources. And guys, that's how we win the AI arms race. All this data that we collect will be anonymized. Companies like Google, Meta, Microsoft, they keep this data locked up all to themselves to expand their own infrastructure and their own data centers. There's around 5,000 data centers all across America, and these companies own less than 300. Who's going to service the 4,700 data centers all across America? Make sure they increase compute and make sure they have power. It takes a company like Fluix, a product like Amy, to deploy these models all across these data centers to collect the data, sell it to the utilities to help them predict load and solve the interconnect problem. Fluix is the only chance America has to solve the AI arms race because we optimize data centers and we help utilities figure out how to power the data centers of tomorrow. If there's an investor out there in the audience that's interested in ushering the next AI industrial revolution, we're raising a $10 million round. We're a company based here in Silicon Valley actively signing on new data centers and utilities. It takes a village of believers to usher in the new age. So if you're interested, let's connect. All right. That means you get a little more time, get 30 extra seconds for feedback. So any, any questions? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm happy to jump right in. And thank you for that. It was a great, great, great pitch. Appreciate it. So you talked a little bit about the long tail of data centers out there, like the 4,700, you know, mm -hmm. other data centers who don't benefit from the technology advantage that companies like Google and Meta have. But at least from what I hear in the news, and I'm not an expert, it feels like there's actually sort of consolid consolidation in that space where you get those mega, uh, if you will, data centers that kind of, you know, facilitate and, and, and support the, the big sort of LLM companies. If, it, if that's indeed the trend, if we're looking for consolidation in bigger, bigger data centers, which have, you know, kind of energy uh, sort of forecasting and thinking embedded into them, how are you guys going to be successful if that long tail sort of disappears and we have bigger, more centralized data centers? So just to clarify, we're talking about consolidation of data centers with these, I guess, hyperscalers, right? Yeah. Um, so the problem is, at least I've traveled across America and spoken to many utility companies, and 
even co-located data centers as well. And anytime you mention cloud stuff, they get apprehensive and they don't want to install their software onto your, their premise. So we're an on-prem software and we sit inside their data center and we optimize and save them energy. Uh, but what we notice is that the hyperscalers keep the data for themselves. That's right. Right. They keep the data for themselves. They might share the models, the agents that they create, the products, but they don't share the data. Data is critical. Data is king. And utilities need that data to unlock the grid. The, the more we increase compute, the more we're going to reach a ceiling when it comes to infrastructure. And utilities all across America have a mandate to increase their AI infrastructure. So that's where we help. We help them predict load growth all across America. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. This really resonates uh, with me. You know, at Felicis, we are investors in Crusoe, which was one of the Neo clouds, and it's very top of mind of how to get the most utilization out of their environments. I'd love to learn more about how you did the initial data collection for the models that you're using. You know, models are what they eat. That's and correct. so I'd love to learn about the data collection. That's correct. So we built our own foundational models. We have a few separators as well, but we built our own foundational models. And funny enough, we've trained our first model on an open source data set in Singapore's NTU data center that helped us simulate 65% in energy savings, which we then used to train in a live facility in Solidion, Berkeley. And from there, we managed to get into very conservative building owners and train our models on more real data. Um, so that's part of the data collection to help us build our models. But as we get into more facilities, more data centers, we can map out the entire grid. So that's what we're looking forward to. Amazing. So really enjoyed the presentation. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. it was, Thank you. Um, it was really, really well done, and the, your excitement about it came through. Um, maybe you could just tell us a little bit about kind of the business model and how you're scaling, considering the fact that you're still early in your life cycle, and I'm sure other investors out there would love to. Yeah, 100%. So our pilots right now are revenue generating, but the revenue that we generate now is not the valuation of our company tomorrow. What the valuation of our company tomorrow is the, the data that we collect from these very critical infrastructure. Um, so AI models is one thing, but who's to say somebody else in the next few months raise way less than us would beat our models. We're using AI models as a wedge to get into these data centers, collect the data, anonymize it, and sell it back to the utilities. That's the million dollar contract right there. Physical AI data to usher in the next physical AI models. Very interesting. So what you're saying actually is that the end customer, if you will, is actually those energy utility companies. That's correct. Right, and they're the ones that are going to buy it because they want to optimize cost on their end and also as potentially as an enabler for them to better serve or win over contracts for, for data centers as they come in. And what's, so that's kind of clear on what the uh, utility companies, what's their motivation, but wh why, would, why would the data centers do it? Right? Why right. would they give you all the data? Exactly. Glad you asked that question. I'm sure everybody over here is familiar with EV cars, right? EV cars and batteries have range anxiety. Data centers have power anxiety. Remember, I said 4,700 data centers all across America. They are worried they're not going to get power if another hyperscaler comes right in their territory. So how do you make sure that constant power is being sent to these data centers and making sure that they are stable? Part of sharing the data and creating that incentive between the data center and the utilities is making sure that they have power. The more awareness utilities have on where to distribute this energy, the better it is for the data center because they get 99.9999% uptime in their data center. And additionally, the data center gets locked in at a lower utility rate. Mm -hmm. So we're the data brokers of that this deal. Cost-cutting exactly. there for them. And they bought it, so it's proved. And we're talking with more utilities all across America, Dominion, National Grid. Everybody is excited about the fact that data centers want to share their data. I'm talking about the most conservative building owners that house critical infrastructure data, and we're exfiltrating that data. Very cool. You talked about the value the data centers are getting with uh, energy and powder utilization. What improvements are you seeing with your prediction model? I'm going to have to answer super quick. Go. Oh, OK, the best way I can answer that really quick is it unlocks uh, uh, 
So distribute. Okay, I mean, no, no, I wish I could I get more time. Give me ten seconds. You were supposed to have that extra thirty, and I took it away from you. Go. Okay, cool. Just confirm. So, yeah. <laughs> so the biggest problem. I'll stop. I'll preface with the biggest problem is distribution. We don't know where to send the energy. So it unlocks the fact that we can we can expand our infrastructure. That's the biggest gap for AI compute. Uh, we can pack more servers. We can have the best algorithms, but if we don't have the infrastructure to back it up, we will never reach the models that we want to reach. And physical AI is some of the most demanding uh, uh, models ever built. I mean, NVIDIA uses simulation uh, to train. Yep. All right. That was cool. great. You did great. I'm All sorry. right. I don't, Thank you so I much. Do a buzzer voice. We're hiring, by the way. So if you're interested to join our company. Join the AI revolution, you know, just reach out to me. Amazing. Cool. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.